<clears throat> As I said, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm going to give an update on LDHS uh, activities over the past year or so. By way of background, uh, the Historical Society, or LDHS as it's known as, runs the Lady Smith Archives and Museum on behalf of the town through a management and operating agreement. This has been in place since 2017 and is up for renewal next year. Under this agreement in 2020, the town provided the LDHS with just under $25,000. An additional $2,100 was budgeted for heritage promotion and professional training. Combined with a $7,500 grant in aid for industrial heritage preservation, total capital provided to the LDHS by the town during 2020 was $35,550. The society is extremely grateful for the financial support provided by the town of Ladysmith. And in the following slides, I hope to be able to show you what you're getting for your money. The LDHS has four centers of activity. These are the archives building below Tim Hortons at the north end of First Avenue, the museum on First Avenue and Bueller, the museum's industrial heritage preservation activities at Oyster Bay Drive, and also the LDH has a very, has, has a very significant online presence. We have a very comprehensive website an active Facebook page with over 1,100 followers, and our own YouTube channel with 40 videos, which to date have received over 38,000 views. Activities in the archives building are divided into two areas. The archives per se, which performs an official traditional archival function and to which access is restricted to trained personnel and the reading room, which contains information on local history, families, etc., which is accessible by the general membership and the public. Operational hours are Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. At all times, the facility is manned by volunteers, with a part-time archivist being there on Tuesdays. Despite COVID, the archives was operational over much of the past year, but behind locked doors with limited physical public access. During the 2020 calendar year, volunteers, volunteers worked over 2,800 hours. This is somewhat lower than a normal year. As of the end of April, 2021, a total of almost a thousand volunteer hours have been served at the archives by volunteers this calendar year. Over the past year, LDHS volunteers have worked on a number of contracts, all to do with preservation and promotion of heritage. Of the four contracts noted here, the top two, the People in Place Neighborhood Project and the Heritage Inventory Project have both been completed. The bottom two are ongoing. The One Community Heritage Network Project is a contract between the Society and Heritage BC and aims to set up a network connecting cultural groups and heritage organizations within East Central Vancouver Island, basically the Mill Bay to, uh, well, to Parksville area. Four workshops have been held with more to come. The Beat Goes On is an exciting project with the Virtual Museum of Canada, which tells the history of Ladysmith and District through its music, putting our area and heritage on a national online stage. The final product is scheduled for launch July 2022. The LDHS produced a Harbour Heritage Walk to coincide with Hometown Tourist Week in 2020. The idea was to suggest a walk that people could do in their hometown, providing information on the history of points along the walk. You may remember uh, that was during the height of COVID restrictions and people were looking for activities they could do within their own family bubble. The walk is on YouTube and has been viewed 200, over 270 times to date. Now to tell you a little bit about what's been happening at the museum. The museum building on First Avenue in Bueller was spruced up by volunteers in August 2020. Thanks to the Kinsmen for a generous contribution towards paint and to Cheryl Bancroft for suggestion of the color scheme. We think it looks pretty slick. 
The building was plagued by repeated flooding issues after heavy rains, which threatened the heritage artifacts which are stored inside. The society was successful with a SEREP, which stands for Community Economic Recovery Incentive Program funding application, which awarded us $89,000 to fix the flooding, flooding problems and to do some renovations. Currently, we are working with town administration on bidding contracting out the work. Once we have the flooding issues sorted, we can direct remaining funds toward minor renovation of the building to improve visitor traffic flow, improve artifact storage and create a curatorial work area, create an additional meeting room which can be rented out, improve climate control, update lighting, and in general, spruce up the building. How much of the, this we get done depends on the budget. I believe that what's happening inside the museum is particularly exciting. There's been a shift in emphasis from chronicling the past to putting the past in perspective with our present and future, and also in establishing the museum as a place of learning. The exhibits are being changed, Permanent exhibits are being updated with application of interactive technologies, and we've introduced temporary feature exhibits to encourage repeat visitation. A key component of the new learning center is our historically speaking talk series. More about this later. Development of the downstairs activity center, which is aimed towards children awaits easing of the COVID situation. The attic space or upstairs gallery is being used for temporary external exhibits featuring subjects of local interest. One just finishing right now is Red Flag, Red Flag. Uh, it's an exhibit about climate change and the environment. Volunteers donated 1800 hours at this museum facility during 2020. And to date in 2021, volunteers have donated in excess of 1000 hours. These are some photos of the front room of the museum building on First Avenue. The top photo shows what used to be there, the original Ladysmith timeline exhibit. And when this photo was taken in early 2020, a temporary quilting exhibit. The original timeline exhibit is being modified and incorporated into the revised permanent exhibits, while the front room space is made available for temporary feature exhibits. The two photos Below at the bottom of the slide show progress in renovating the room to house the current temporary feature exhibit, Prime Predators of Vancouver Island. This, uh, pr the Prime Predator exhibit opened on Family Day, February the 15th, 2021. Pictured here are some of the 400 visitors to date. I have to say kids love this ex exhibit and especially the buttons which let you hear wolves howling cougars caterwauling, bears grunting, etc. Not only do visitors learn about the animals themselves, but also how to prepare for hiking and what to do if encountering bears, cougars, etc. while on the trails behind Ladysmith. This exhibit benefited from loan agreements with local museums and the provincial museum, and also gained from input from local and provincial wildlife organizations and enforcement agencies. The LDHS put on a number of other activities during Heritage Week 2021. A heritage treasure trail meandered through the town and harbor area. Participants were challenged to identify 33 heritage features along the route, clues being provided in the form of little poems, one of which you can see here on the top right. Answers were later provided with information about the heritage artifacts, excuse me. This trail was wildly successful. Despite snowstorms and COVID-19, 257 people physically did the route and there were over 5,000 views of the trail online. The trail culminated at the LMS Marina where a collection of heritage wooden vessels was on view. Thanks also to the Chamber of Commerce for providing trail maps and clues to the public from their location downtown. The final event hosted by the Society during Heritage Week was the second annual Heritage Awards Ceremony held on Zoom. 
The idea behind these awards is to recognize and encourage heritage preservation and promotion within the community. We had a stellar group of worthy recipients. Special guests included our MP and MLA, and uh, Mayor Stone and Chief Harris gave out the awards. 35 devices viewed the uh, award ceremony live, and there were over a thousand subsequent social media viewings of the recorded event. Before we leave the Downtown Museum, I just want to give a little further information on the Historically Speaking talk series, which is put on by the Society through the Museum Learning Center. Like the temporary feature exhibits, the idea behind these talks is to provide both historical information and to perform a public service. The broad range of subjects can be seen on this slide, ranging from the smelter and its industrial legacies, earthquakes, fires, um, wolves, wildlife awareness and safety, which was obviously a companion talk to the prime predator exhibit. The talks were commenced pre-COVID with physical presentations to a live audience and were later migrated to Zoom, recorded and now reside on the YouTube channel. To date, the society has hosted 12 of these talks, which have had over 1900 views or attendees. More talks are in the pipeline. Now we move to review museum activities at the Comox Logging Rail Yard and Oyster Bay Drive. The rail yard itself is a rare heritage treasure consisting of trackage buildings and vintage railway rolling stock. And it's within the designated arts and heritage hub in the town's waterfront development plan. Despite being shut down by COVID for much of the year, considerable progress was made on preservation of the rolling stock in the form of repairs, rust scraping and preliminary painting. Quite a bit of work was also done on site maintenance. After a considerable COVID layover, work has resumed uh, on May the 15th. And last weekend, rotten ties were replaced at a primary track switch. Unfortunately, there's plenty more of that type of work to be done. We anticipate the imminent return of the Plymouth 107 shunting engine to Ladysmith, a loan agreement having been finalized between the LDHS and the Alberni Valley Museum. Council may remember approving the LDHS entering into this loan agreement. This engine will enable moving the existing rolling stock around, including the iconic Loki 11, whose 100th birthday anniversary we hope to celebrate in style in 2023. Before we leave this area, we need to note a matter of some urgency. While the Loki shed is in generally decent condition, its doors badly need attention and are becoming dangerous. A joint LMS LDHS SEREP funding application, which was spearheaded by the LMS for restoration and rehabilitation of the Loki shed and the car shop was unfortunately unsuccessful. And I suggest that the town and societies get together to work on securing funding for this necessary restoration. Current activity at the station is also under the LDHS umbrella. Built in 1943, this heritage building owned by the Corridor Foundation has been empty for some time. The LDHS has a one year option on the building with the idea of determining through public consultation the best non-profit community use for the building. Work is ongoing to halt deterioration of the building and to clean it up a bit prior to opening it for public viewing later this summer. Volunteers have been hard at work cleaning out trash, painting over graffiti, etc. A new roof has just been installed, paid for by the Corridor Foundation and financial contributions from the Kinsman and the Rotary Club are enabling installation of new guttering downspouts and a door. Other problems the Historical Society, oh, pro, <laughs> problems, projects the Historical Society has been involved in include working with the town on updating the collage of First Avenue and Gattaker Street, recommendation of a color scheme for the new public washroom on First Avenue, um, 
The Society has formed a Joint Harbor Heritage Committee with the LMS and participates in the Arts and Heritage Hub Steering Committee. And also, the Society is working with the town toward updating the 2008 Heritage Strategic Plan. Several meetings have been held on this to date. To finish up this activity update, in overview, we've seen a significant expansion of our online presence and activities. The Society is stable financially. We have a paid up membership of 50, but our following is in the thousands. Our activities are aimed at raising the profile of local heritage. We've expanded our working relationships and fully embrace a principle of inclusivity. We're proud of our accomplishments and promise more to come. The Society is striving to live up to its vision statement, which reads, the LDHS is universally recognized as the steward of local heritage and through the excellence and inclusiveness of its programs is a major contributor to community, education and tourism. Thank you again for this opportunity to present to council.